Hello, my name is uh, Rasmus Pro, and I would like to give you a demonstration of our software Paradise for creating uh, peak tables from untargeted uh, GCMS data. And let's just uh, jump right into it. Uh, on the left, we have the main tabs. Uh, the first one would give you a sort of an overview of how to use uh, Paradise, which is also what I'm going to provide here. The second tab is where you import or define what data you're going to work on. And it'll start in whatever uh, session you were working on before. So I already have some data here. But I actually want to generate a new session, uh, which I'm going to call demo. And it asks me if I should uh, use the current data, but I actually want to start a completely new session. So now I do not have any data, uh, but I can add uh, data. And basically the way to add data is to import data as CDF files. Um, so you would have to export your data into uh, CDF files. And I have some test data here. I'm just going to select all of them. And then it's going to um, import the data. Um, you can also uh, import uh, old sessions, so stuff you have been working on uh, earlier, in the import-export part here. Uh, but we're just going to use this uh, imported data here. Here's all the data, that is all the file names. Uh, and automatically we are brought into this view where we can uh, see the chromatograms as ticks. We could also change that to BPC or to some kind of uh, uh, selected masses. Now, if the data is very unaligned, we could uh, press the data alignment. I'm not going to do that. It's very time consuming, but it's fully automated. It consists of running a co-shift and correlation optimized warping. Um, basically, you run it, and if you like the results, that's fine. You don't really have to aim for perfect alignment. You just have to make it easier to um, to define where your intervals are. And, and once you have your data here, uh, you can select intervals by shift clicking. So here I have selected an interval. Let me go back a little bit and maybe find something slightly more interesting. Let's look at, let's say, these ones here. Actually, let me do these ones. So let's see. So here, for example, you can see you have several overlapping peaks. Now, our suggestion is that you focus on one peak at a time. So you basically try to get everything, including baseline, from each peak. So that means you may have to make overlapping peaks. But that is going to make it easier for the models that we're going to do to actually find interesting results. So you're going to make life easier for yourself uh, by doing that. Typically, we often find that even though we aimed at one chemical, we are often going to find uh, more than one. Uh, but we'll see. You can also use the slider down here to change your view. And you can drag uh, the sides of this one if you want. Uh, so there's several possibilities. If you want and you have an able interval edit, you can actually also change these intervals if you would like to. Let me reset the zoom. Here we are. Now we basically have to go through everything. Uh, if um, you have a wheel on your mouse, you can just uh, sort of turn the wheel to go left and right. Once we are happy, with the intervals chosen, we're going to go to analysis and we're going to say fit models. Now what's going to happen is that we're going to fit models to each and every interval independently. Um, and after that has been done, we're going to evaluate uh, what happened. So we're going to leave it running now. That's going to take uh, a while. Uh, and in the meantime, we'll just uh, make a cup of coffee uh, or whatever. Now, after a little while, the models have been calculated and um, we can now start to take a look at what's going on. So, in this uh, window here, or this tab, we have quite a lot of information, so I'll guide you through it. This is the first interval. 
This is the starting and ending point. You can go back to the editor to have a view on where it was. Um, so here we see the actual peak. Here we see the modeled components and we start with a one component model. Now down here I can increase that and go for a two component model, which would then have two sets of uh, uh, ticks or illusion profiles. One for component one and one for component two. And the colors are shown here. It seems like one is modeling the baseline and the other one is modeling the chemical peak. Now to guide us a little bit here, uh, there are several things worth uh, looking into. First of all, we would like to have a model that has a sufficient number of components. That often means that the variance it explains should be close to 100. So component one does not seem to model the data well. If we go back to the one component model, and if I click in this window here, I can see what is left unexplained in a one component model. And we can see that the one component model is not actually doing a very good uh, job. There's a lot of residual structure. Uh, so that indicates that we should probably move on. If we take a look at the two component model, it describes much more variance. And if I look here, the residuals are way smaller. So that could indicate that maybe a two component model is fine. Now the color here, the grayness indicates how many peaks have been identified in an interval. So it's interesting that in the four component model, there seems to be several components. Now, if you look here, there's a green component, but it seems like there's something underneath the green one. I can actually turn off the view of the green component to get a better idea of what's happening. So it seems like there's a, a smaller peak hidden completely within inside this uh, bigger one. And it seems like the light blue and light green are mainly describing a baseline variation. So I'm actually going to stick with the dark green and the dark blue. And if we want to export those, we have to click here. And they turn uh, more fat, uh, the lines here. So what's going to happen uh, once we export the data is that it's going to use the spectra shown here to uh, uh, try to identify the identity of the compound. And then we also have the concentrations uh, of these uh, compounds, the dark blue, which will be exported. Now the data here comes from a fermentation and so there's a time aspect here. Uh, so they actually look uh, reasonable. So we're basically done with uh, interval number one. We have to go through all of the intervals and we have to do the same thing. It seems like I selected a strange interval here. I should have cut off here rather than here. Now I could go back and change that selection, but let's just for the sake of it see uh, what happens. Now immediately it seems like a three component model is nice. It has a high variance explained and it has uh, the most number of components identified. So let's take a look at that. You see we get um, this interval here. Uh, let me just turn off the dark blue one, which is this one. But, but you also see that it's been cut off uh, so I actually did a very bad job at selecting the compounds here. So really, I should either have increased or preferably have decreased this interval. Instead of coloring each, uh, com each peak uh, according to um, the number, we can also uh, color it according to um, what our deep learning uh, uh, expert tool um, identifies the peak as. And you can see that these ones are identifies, uh, identified as cutoff peaks. And this is unknown because it doesn't actually look like a baseline completely. It looks like there's a little bit of structure in it, which is not uh, as such uh, very nice. If we look at this one, that's clearly identified as a peak. Okay, let me go back to the uh, traditional um, uh, the coloring. So, so I'm only going to keep this one. This one was a mistake. 
and in reality I would go back and change that uh, but for now I'm gonna say I still get my blue compound and I remove all the interference from from this one and from baseline you see we have a deep baseline so to speak so I'm gonna say that I'm happy with this one and I'm gonna move on to the next one this was a very small peak 177 let's go back here and take a look uh, so it's around here let me zoom in oh it's one of these ones uh, so it's the one that I accidentally included in this interval so now let's see if we're able to model this we also have another peak here but we're not really interested in that if I move on here to a two component model I can see that the variance described is not too good because I actually haven't modeled this part and I need to model this part in order for my residuals to be um, sort of fairly uh, random and containing uh, only non-systematic variation so now it seems like I've been doing a better job at removing yes that looks very nice so what I'm gonna go for is this uh, dark blue uh, compound and I'm gonna move on to the next one I'm going a little fast here well that's the last of the three peaks so let's see if we can get that one and it seems like a free component model is uh, modeling that uh, nicely um, there's also it seems like a 10 component model is finding one more peak I would be a little bit sort of reluctant to go that far but we can take a look and see what it is we need to turn off sort of the big peaks this is the peak we already uh, had. Let me get rid of this one. Let me actually also get rid of this one. And the light blue. Okay. So let's see. That's a very, very small peak and probably just a nonlinearity in our data. I would be very reluctant to include that so I'm gonna stick with with this one where we take the dark blue peak okay so missing one peak here we are also a very small peak a low signal to noise ratio lots of baseline this one seems to be more complicated to model you see the variance described well I don't know it's a little bit difficult to assess let's see what's happening here you see it's very difficult also to um, assess what's going on here because there's so much baseline but if you actually look at this look at how nicely we get the peak here without baseline so these three other uh, components seem to be modeling the baseline I'm gonna go with this one uh, for now and we are basically done now now that we have defined all the peaks we want to export we can click the export selected peaks and decide where to put the data and let's take a look here NIST is doing its thing so we have to wait a little bit and we are done so we can go to the folder and take a look so I get an Excel sheet uh, that has different uh, tabs the main one being this one where we have the peak area let me zoom out a little bit so we have six different peaks that we have defined we get the concentration, the relative concentration in each and every uh, sample and on top of that we also get an idea about how uh, good the match was uh, clearly there's a problem here um, but we can go in and see where it was found and in what model and which component number etc and we can directly start doing data analysis on this we also get a uh, mass spectra that we can use uh, for further investigation 
and uh, we get an idea about what hits that word. We can define in NIST how many um, suggestions we want. Uh, the default is two, I believe. Um, so basically, uh, this is it. Um, now, there's a lot more to be said about how to use this software, but I hope this gave you an idea on what can be done with this. Thank you.